Hi. A handful of friends have reached out and asked if I would be willing to do a tutorial on the basics of making paisanki eggs. This is something that has been in my family for generations. It's something I love. I think it's beautiful. It's fun. Generally, we make these eggs at Easter time for the most part, and they are made as gifts. Each of the designs, the colors hold meaning that then become a part of that blessing that is passed along in that gift. We are going to take this step by step and here we go. Here are the basic supplies that we're going to need. First of all, you'll need your eggs. The fresher they are, the better. Fresher eggs take the dyes better for some reason and they will need to be room temperature. I'll tell you how to prep those later. You will need a candle and matches. You'll need your Easter egg dyes. Now, these are specific dyes for Paisanki. I get them um, in a couple shops here in New York, but you can certainly order them online as well. Today, we're just gonna work with the basics, yellow, orange, red, and black. They come in tons of colors, but these are the ones we're gonna start with. To prep those dyes, you're also gonna need vinegar, some empty jars, one for each color. I like to keep the lids so that you can um, then save the colors to use repeatedly. You're gonna need some stuff to scoop your eggs out of that dye. We're also gonna need what's called kishka sticks. These are what puts the, the wax on the eggs. You have a fine point, a medium point, and a thicker point. Um, these are the two that I use the most. You don't usually need the thicker point um, except for specific projects. Um, a lot of times you can buy these in kits. They do sell electric ones. To me, these are old school. I really like using these the best, and I've used both, but these are my favorites. So we're going old school. You're also gonna need beeswax. You need to get 100% beeswax. They'll come wrapped um, and packaged any number of ways, um, but it is important that it is 100% pure beeswax. Also, my favorite little thing is you get these in those little sewing kits sometimes that they leave you in hotels. You open one end and use this wire on occasion for when one of your kishka sticks gets plugged. There's a couple tricks uh, to get those out, but this is my, my favorite thing. Sometimes they'll get plugged with a little bit of lint or something. So at any rate, this is what we need to get started. So we want to make sure our eggs don't have any cracks or weak spots. Sometimes they'll have ridges on them. Now, these little raised bits of shell are just fine. The wax may not go on as evenly, but that's just fine. This egg looks great. Now, what you don't want is this. See how you can kind of see the light through that? And these little skitters, there's not a crack per se, but you can see that this egg is compromised. This is a great egg to scramble for breakfast, but not for making paisanki. Next, we want to prep our eggs. Bowl of warm water, put just a drip of mild dish soap in, and we're gonna to wanna to wash the eggs. What this does is we're taking off uh, any oil, any processing, anything that might be on the outside of the egg that would then hinder uh, the dye from taking. Rinse those off thoroughly and let them dry. We're gonna to wanna to work on raw eggs, not hard boiled eggs. Hard boiled eggs will not take the dyes. Um, some people like to blow their eggs beforehand. I like to work on the raw eggs. I think that they um, sink in the dye better and you don't have to plug the holes. All right, prepping the dyes. Make sure you read your packets very carefully. Most of the dyes require vinegar. There's a couple that don't, but most of them do. Just follow the directions, it's pretty straightforward. Add your dye to the jar. Be careful in doing so. Easily they make a mess. 
add your tablespoon of vinegar, your one and a quarter cup of boiling water, and stir. Now, one of the things I like to do while I'm prepping my dyes is I try to keep them in order from lightest to darkest, yellow, orange, red, and black. That way it's um, easier to keep them uh, from getting confused. You'll also want to have a stirrer per color uh, so that the dyes don't mix. Let these cool and get room temperature and you'll be ready to go. So when we work with the eggs, we want to make sure that we wash our hands really well. We're very good at this right now. Um, the oils from your hands can transfer onto the eggs and affect the dye. A lot of people use um, surgical gloves. We don't have those right now, so we're just going to work with egg in hand. So we're going to start with our egg being white. Paisanki is plural for paisanka. It comes from the word paisanti, which means to write. We are going to write our designs onto our eggs with beeswax applied with our kiska stick. There's a tiny little opening here that we're going to be putting our beeswax into. As it's heated, it will flow through the tip. This is our little writing instrument. Each line or design holds whatever color is applied to the egg. The lines that are written on while the egg is white will remain white. Those that are put on when the egg is yellow will stay yellow and so on as we progress with our colors. The wax protects the covered parts of the egg from further dyeing. This will make more sense as we continue. So to begin, we'll want to fill our Kiska stick with wax. You'll heat it just a bit in the flame, holding it this way, not this way. It heats the wax nicer. We use beeswax because of its high melting point, it helps the lines on your eggs not to smear. To fill our kiska, we're going to heat it in the flame, and then we are going to scoop it lightly into the beeswax, filling the top. Dab it with a cloth. Now the beeswax is yellow to start and as it heats, it turns black. We don't really want to be touching the beeswax with our fingers. Uh, we get wax in our fingers that then can get on the eggs and affect the dyes. But I just wanted you to be able to see this up close. Keep your beeswax on your wax paper. Don't put it on a paper towel or a towel. It'll pick up the fuzz and that's a good way to get it clogged. Here we go. We're going to first apply a little dot on the bottom of our egg and on the top. We're then going to eyeball the middle of those two dots, right, middle of that, middle of that, and connect the dots. Put a dot at the bottom, in the middle, at the top. These are great little ways, especially to start out, to help keep your line straight. Now just connect the dots. Easy. You're going to want to keep your kiska on a bit of a diagonal, not straight up and down, so the wax comes out better. You do the same thing on the other side. Eyeball the bottom, middle, top middle, middle, connect the dots. And if you have a little blooper like that, it doesn't matter because we're going to be going this way. Now you're going to turn the egg in half and do the same thing bottom, middle, top, okay, middle, here we go, 
fun, right? If they're not completely straight, who cares? We're working on it, right? Again, we've got the bottom, got the top, eyeball it, put in the middle, middle. Now we're going to do the same thing sideways, okay? We're going to put a horizontal band around. We already have this little dot in the middle, but we're going to make sure that we're straight. You can put a little all the way around. Eyeball it and eyeball it. Great. Connect the dots. Great. Now we're going to look at the front of it. We're going to make another line. Center. We're going to look at the center here. Put a little dot. After a while, you may not need dots, but they're helpful to start. Going halfway between these two from our center. Halfway between. Great, right? Flip the egg over, do the same thing on this side. Now you don't need the dot here because you've got this line. Connect. Beautiful, right? your lines aren't perfect, don't worry about it. Okay, our last one. Great. Now our next step is we're going to start to make our Star of David. We're going to start with a little dot. Meet up to that. You're going to want to go straight across almost and up. I'm going to go up until they're about equal on both sides. Look here, make that equal and come up. I'm going to continue to do that. Try to go straight across there. Great. The star symbol that we're working on right now is one of the most popular symbols used in Paisanki, and it symbolizes success and God's love. And I always get excited when these are still even by the time you get around. Or about, right? Now do it on the other side. Now that you've gotten your star on both sides, you're going to add a second star on the inside. Using kind of the same ideas that you were using as you first went around. Again, everything that we're putting wax on right now is going to remain white. That one's a little off, but ah oh well. Okay, 
as soon as you let go of having it be perfect, it makes it more fun. Okay, great, other side. Now that you've got this part, we're gonna do another star, this time on the outside. All right, so now that we have stars on both sides, let's add something else a little fun that will again remain white. We're gonna put a little wheat, which essentially are just little diagonal, almost little Vs. Wheat symbolizes wishes for bountiful harvest. These also look a little bit like pine tree symbols, which would be for health and stamina. Uh, trees symbolize rebirth of nature and life. I like all of those. By the way, every time I'm pulling the kishka stick away, it's just because I'm putting it into the flame quickly and coming back. Right? Now, just because let's mix it up, we can do the same thing going this way, just different direction. So we're just doing every other one, adding just these little dashes. So here's a little trick I like to do. Let's say you have a line like this one that's not so straight. Sometimes, or let's say you get a blooper from the wax, do something to be a bit of a design element, right? So let's just say we're gonna add that. Now the line doesn't look quite so bad. We could say these are tiny little sunbursts, uh, which would be a source of light and life that you're passing on. So now that we've got all of the wax on thus far, it's time to put it in our dye. We're gonna start with yellow. And we'll let it sit for, I don't know, maybe five minutes. So. Now we pull it out. Doesn't that look nice? We're just gonna pat it dry. And get ready for the next step. So now we continue to add more wax. Keeping in mind that whatever we cover now will remain yellow. So we're gonna to wanna to continue this. Once you have both sides filled in, then let's see, maybe now we will add some dots, right? That might be a fun little punch of yellow. color yellow symbolizes wealth and fertility. 
for successful harvest and wisdom. All right, we've got our dots on both sides. Since we're getting good at dots, let's add some to the tip of our star here. Let's make these a little bigger so they'll stand out. Again, this will be a pretty yellow. Even dots have meanings. If they're scattered over the egg, they can suggest a sky of stars. They also symbolize the Virgin Mary's tears as she wept for Jesus. And again, what we do to one side, we're going to want to do to the other. So now that we've got this done, let's pop it into the orange. Into the orange we go. This orange looks really nice. We're going to gently pat it dry. And once it is dry, we are ready for more wax. So now let's decide what we want to be orange. I think the next step is we'll fill in the center part. And maybe what we'll do is do every other How about we do every other star spot? Orange represents power, endurance, ambition. And when you combine the passion of red, the wisdom of the yellow color, you're combining those together to give us the sun color of orange. And that also represents everlasting warmth. So now that we have that done on both sides, what else do we want to do orange? How about we add some more details? We're getting good at dots. So let's put some dots on either side of our little stars here. Remember, I believe those will be yellow, I think. Maybe they're white, I don't remember. Anyway, we'll find out at the end, won't we? So at this point, I think that's all we'll do with the orange, unless there's something you want to add. So it is ready for the next dye, which is red. Love pulling the eggs out of the dies, but you also have to be super careful. I have broken many an egg. Oh, so look at, isn't that pretty? Here we've got our beautiful red egg. Dab it off gently. Don't rub it, just dab it and let it dry before we get ready for our last round of wax. The next step is whatever we put wax on will again remain red. So let's begin by filling in this outer edge. Red is the most vigorous color in Paisanki and it means the sun, happiness in life, hope, passion. back, look, see if you've missed any spots. Keep going. You can lose hours doing this. I mentioned earlier that this uh, dandy little wire uh, is terrific for unclogging the kiska. Another option is to heat the kiska and to poke a few times the end of it into your beeswax. 
frequently that will help as well. Now that we have everything covered that we want to be red, let's put it in our final color, black. Very careful putting your egg in there. Looky there. Now that we've put the egg in the final die and it's nice and dry, we can begin to melt the wax off. And this way we will let our design peer through. You're gonna to wanna to hold it close to the flame. Just go back and forth, more in the center of the flame, not the top, sometimes that will burn. And you just begin to wipe. It's not really touching the flame, it's just hovering. Now is the time you wanna be extra careful too as you hold your egg. There have been times when you'll spend hours on a design and then accidentally drop it. It happens. Lots. This is when your design really starts to shine. It's so exciting. Sometimes the little bloopers or the things that you didn't think look straight at the beginning don't matter at all. It's all just beautiful. Paisanki started as a, as a pagan tradition. And they said that you could only think good thoughts about the person you were making the egg for. Otherwise, those bad thoughts would be going into the egg and that would be passed along too. So think happy thoughts while you're making your eggs. And there we go, our finished paisanka. So now that we have finished decorating our egg, we have a couple options as to how to preserve it. First of all, we can do nothing. Let the egg dry naturally and the insides will eventually have a bit of a rattle. Um, if you want to have a little bit of shine, you can always add a little bit of olive oil on the outside. However, if you decide to do this method, make sure you don't shake the egg. It'll create gases inside that, trust me, you do not want. You will be tempting the egg to explode. <laughs> I like to blow my eggs. And to do that, you're gonna need polyurethane. Make sure you use an oil-based polyurethane and not a water-based. Water-based will make the colors on your eggs run. I like a semi-gloss, but you can use basically any kind of gloss you want. You can put on one, two coats, however you'd like, um, depending on how glossy you'd like your egg to look when it's finished. Generally, we put the polyurethane on with gloves, but those are a scarcity now. Once you finish polyurethaning your egg, you're going to want to let it dry. I generally go to the craft store and buy these uh, little floral blocks and I use toothpicks in the top. Um, I've had friends that have set up boards with nails that are great and super sturdy. I don't have room to store that. Anyway, once you get the polyurethane on your egg, you're gonna wanna let it sit and dry for a good 24 to 48 hours. Once the egg is no longer tacky to touch, then you can begin the process of blowing it out. You can buy uh, these uh, dandy little objects online. They're specific for blowing out Paisanki eggs. The end of this has a, a bit of a tip that looks a little like a screw. And this is a little poker needle. I like to take the very ends of both, uh, both ends of the egg and take a kind of a dull old knife and scrape ever so gently. It gives me just a little leeway. Then I take, screw, 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 and eventually it creates a hole in one end. Flip it around. You'll do the same on the other end. Once this part is done, you take your dandy little poker. You're gonna wanna poke the bottom and what this does is, as you poke it around the inside, it breaks the yolk so the egg is able to be blown out. Now there's all kinds of little gadgets, machines, all kinds of little helpful uh, ways to blow out the egg. Um, I just do it old school and blow. 
over the sink. <laughs> Once you finish blowing the egg, you're going to want to get one of these. I get them at the dollar store in the baby aisle. Fill them up with water. Take your finger, plug one little hole, blow the water into the other end of the hole, slosh it around, blow it out, repeat that a couple times. Uh, I usually do at least one round with a drop of uh, dish soap in it so you can clean out all the bacteria. Make sure it doesn't stink. Then you take your block again, put your egg in that hole on one of the toothpicks and let it drain. Sometimes a day later, I'll take it off. It might be stuck a little bit, blow. Sometimes a little more liquid comes out and sit it down again. That way it'll nice and dry before uh, you wanna put it away or display it. Anyway, that's how we preserve our eggs. These are some of the eggs that I've made over the years. Some of them are fairly traditional. Here's another one that I would consider fairly traditional. Or maybe something like this, which is a little traditional with a flare. Here's one that I made when I was a teenager. We actually still have some of my great grandmother's eggs. I believe my aunt has them. You can also do something that's completely, well, seemingly untraditional, fun. You can take the outline, the basic outline design. It's called 48 triangles. What's fun is you can change up the colors, the designs to make these two completely different looking eggs. I've recently started working on quail eggs, which is terrific fun. Look how tiny these are. They're super fun. And when you're working on those, a small design can certainly go a long way. This past year, I actually, for the first time, made some eggs as Christmas gifts. You don't always have to work on white eggs as well. These were made starting with brown eggs. This one was actually done with a vinegar resistance. This is definitely a traditional art form that is certainly not tradition bound. So there you have it, the basics for making paisanki eggs. I sure hope this has been helpful, but most importantly, I hope it's been fun. Happy paisankiing. <laughs>